Hello, Dave Dog here. Welcome back to Grey Dog FM. This is Leeds United promoting the 23s. We're on our second season, coming into 23-24. Let's have a look then what's been going on in the transfer market and look at our pre-season friendlies. And later we'll be showing our first home game of the season against Aston Villa. So first of all, let's have a look at the transfer window then. Some ins and quite a few outs, mainly on loan. And we've got a few days left of the transfer window. So 62 million we've spent so far, bringing in 18 million. So net spend of 44 million so far. And these are the players that have left us. Junior Firpo was on loan at FC Porto last season and we had a fee already arranged he most of the season he was injured but FC Porter paying us 14.2 5 million and Junior Firpo has left the club Leif Davis to Monaco on a free Luke Thomas young player uh, only 18 I believe yes 18 attacking midfielder has gone to St Mirren on a free Jan Paveda has gone to Cologne for 130,000 rising to 165,000 uh, James DeBio Central defender, 18 years old, has gone out on loan to Stockport. Tyler Roberts has eventually left and he's gone to Championship Bristol City. Just short of a million, 900,000 we got for him. He's hung around in the under-23s all last season and now left for Bristol City. Noah Kenner, again, one that was expected a, a big future for. But uh, he has now left and gone to Birmingham, 140,000 down and rising to 250,000. So a good fee there we're getting in. Martin Spencer never really made uh, the grade in the 23s, has uh, gone to Raufoss, a Norwegian second division club. So I believe Martin Spencer uh, is Norwegian yet, yeah. so he's gone back to his homeland. Uh, on a free transfer. Mateus Bogus has gone out on loan again, this time to Coventry. Uh, season long loan, recall possible. Rodrigo, we've got rid of, of our record signing at last. He went on out on loan with a transfer fee agreed last season to Wolves, but Wolves didn't want to take that one. They had to force him out of the club really and say, you know, you've not uh, got a chance of playing. Uh, he was going to sit out his contract and go on a free, but we managed to get 2.4 million for him from Trabzonspor, so he's gone to Turkey. Rodrigo, we're still paying uh, 22 and a half thousand pound on his wages, but a good nearly 80 grand off the wage bill there. So Rodrigo leaves for Trabzonspor. Ryan Edmondson has gone on loan, 63,000 long fee to Northampton. Chris Moore again out on loan to Exeter. All with recall clauses if we need to bring them up. Cody Drama gone to Coventry. Joins Mateus Bogus there. So we've got two players out at Coventry. Ben Andrinucci, a good under-18 player. Uh, not quite made it to the 23s as yet. He's uh, 18-year-old Irish striker. He's gone to Doncaster on loan. So a lot of young players going out on loan. So let's see who we've brought in then. We finally signed a left-back believe it or not and he is a voye smolchik croatian 23 year old two full caps for croatia uh, left back can also play central defense we signed him from a uh, hardly known team reeka in croatia for 3.6 million his value is now showing as 24 to 27 million so a really good sign in that uh, Previously 12 under 21 caps and uh, he looks like a really good signing if you uh, compare him to uh, Burpo and uh, the fees involved uh, there's no choice for me this this is a guy for us so uh, Avoye Smolchik a new left back Axel de Sarsic was on loan with us last year we all had a transfer agreed from Monaco and again a snip at five million pounds uh, youngster coming in from Aberdeen, Connor Barron, only £45,000, already valued up to 250000 
Scottish central midfielder, only 20 years old, he's been capped at under 17 level and uh, one for the future or one to uh, make a little bit of money on and to cover the board's uh, expectations. Now one record signing out in Rodriga, another record signing in, Michael Olise from Crystal Palace has cost us 40 million. He's already valued at 65 to 86 million so again we've got value there. Three and a half star, potential four and a half star. Although the fee's quite high and the press were saying you've overpaid. I mean the valuation so far is proving that we haven't and we'll see how he goes. We're uh, getting quite a few uh, wingers now so somebody may have to move. We've still got Rafinha here but we'll look at the squad in a little minute and the final one brought in Sonny Perkins been doing so well for Leeds in real life uh, but I had to as he had a contract at West Ham signed a new contract there we had to pay 13 million for him rising to 16 and a quarter and uh, only 19 years old but four and a half star potential ability one for the future and if he's anything like in the game what he's playing like in real life then again that will be another bargain signing uh, his valuation showing roughly what we paid for him so uh, it can only improve I think so those are the signings ins and outs so far a few days left in the window I would like to possibly sign uh, a centre back uh, and possibly a central midfielder but I don't want to block the pathway of the younger players that are coming through uh, although from uh, star ratings they're not showing up as well as we possibly expected well just on the uh, Rodrigo transfer it uh, worked out I got a news item come through that uh, on the games he'd played for a as in wages and uh, transfer fee he'd cost us £650,000 per game so a disastrous transfer there not uh, living up to the, his international billing uh, let's have a look at, then at new contracts for some players. First one, Jack Harrison has got a new five-year contract through to 2028. He's on 90,000 a week now. Alisi, of course, new players come in. He's on 57,000. He's contracted to 2028. Jamie Shackleton, that was done last season, I believe, 2028. Harvey Smallchick. He's on 37,000. He's got to 2028, 20, so quite long term. The big one, though, is Rafinha has signed a new contract and he's contracted with us to 2028 20, on the massive wage of £110,000 a week. It's definitely our highest earner, but uh, he definitely deserves it, unlike the 120000 we were paying Rodrigo. Just on the, a small chick sign in, he was wanted by Liverpool, Villa, Milan, and West Ham. So that's what made me go for him, amongst other things, but wanted by lots of clubs and certainly a bargain, as I've already said. Stuart Dallas has signed a new contract to 2025. It's a couple, couple of years, uh, 45 grand. And Lewis Bate has uh, signed a new longer term deal. Very low money at the moment. He's only on 8,000, but uh, 2027. So th those are the contracts that... Uh, have been signed in the close season just one on the transfers we did try to get other players in that Leeds have bought in real life De Ketelaire but unlike as in real life we were unlucky we had a 33 million pound bid accepted I was asking ridiculous wages obviously more than the 110,000 I can't remember just what the figure was probably about 150,000 a week he was wanting something like that so it was outside the budget uh, we, so we couldn't get to Kettler just as in real life uh, Sinisteria we met his release clause but he wasn't interested in signing for us it was a similar thing with Tyler Adams we couldn't get him he uh, wasn't interested in signing so Leeds United's uh, pull as such in uh, this save not as good as in real life uh, but we've signed Elise he's our record signing and he's also fourth favorite with the bookies for the top young player so that is a decent signing as I said a couple more still want to do for the transfer window closes but it's not disastrous we've got a very reasonable squad full of young players and I don't want to block these younger players like Gelhart, 
Bait, Greenwood, Cresswell, McGurk has, has pulled through. He's uh, certainly showing in the, in the pre-season friendlies. You know, it's a balancing act. You see a lot of people on uh, doing saves on online and uh, in YouTube videos, and they fill the team full of star players. Just spend, spend, spend. You know, they're, they're just all individuals. What we're doing is here building a team, and we're trying to bring young players through and uh, you know keep the Leeds United flame burning as such. So let's look at how we've gone on in pre-season then. Uh, we had a pre-season tour to America, where else? And uh, most of the squad were there. Tyro Iwani, last season's top scorer, was playing in the African Cup of Nations, where they, I think they've, Nigeria finished third in that. Uh, so he was a late arrival back uh, for pre-season training. But first game, North Carolina away, a 5-0 thumping. And uh, we play, more or less played a first team in that one. Calvin Phillips, Gustin Alvarez, Martinez got two. Jamie Shackleton and Pascal Strauch were the scorers. Second game, a bit of rotation, but mainly uh, first team squad players. And we came from, I think it was 2-0 down to win 3-2. Dan James got a couple. And Omar Richards with the winner in the fourth minute of injury time. In the third game against Nashville, we played all the youngsters and it backfired in that they just couldn't handle it and uh, we lost that game 2-0. The next game, which is the biggest game of the tour, was New York Red Bulls and again we uh, played mainly first team players. Dan James again with a couple of goals and Christ Somerville uh, winning that one 3-1, so three wins and a defeat on that tour. Then we went to uh, Portugal, played Estoril, and 4-0 uh, winning that. So pre-season matches going really well. Elise, his debut in that game, scored, and it was 4-0. Aronson, Elise, Harrison too. Harrison had a really good game in that. Two assists and two goals. Uh, man of the match performance. And then we went to the Community Shield at Wembley where we got a 1-0 battering. Really, it should have been more woodwork, missed chances, uh, and not much from us. But uh, in the end, 1-0 defeat. I think uh, mainly because uh, I said in the pre-press conference that uh, I thought it was a glorified friendly. <laughs> so uh, and we're not bothered about the Community Shield. So first game of the season, a 1-1 draw at Leicester. Let's just uh, have a look at that one then. We had the better chances at 1.54 XG to their 0.99. 13 shots, 4 on target, 12 shots, 2 on target to them. But they scored early on at that uh, thorn in our side. Harvey Barnes scored on 22 minutes. And uh, it looked like we were going to go down to a 1-0 defeat. But let's watch our goal. Uh, this is a comedy. Patrick Bamford, 4th minute of added time. So this is uh, Leicester's uh, goal after 22 minutes. Daka knocks it down and Barnes fires into the top corner. Uh, if you remember, we had a 5-5 draw last game of the season against Leicester uh, at their place. And this is uh, Spikel handing it on a plate to Bamford there to knock in an equaliser. Fourth minute of added time. So we start the season off with a 1-1 draw and a point. So this was a team we fielded in the first game of the season. Just a lease I added to... Uh, last season's uh, squad, uh, Melian in goal, Aileen right back, the new captain, uh, Liam Cooper is on his way out, uh, he hasn't quite uh, got a transfer yet but there's every chance he may or he may stay with us in a coaching capacity, he started doing his coaching badges, Disarcy and Strauch, central defensive partnership, Dallas at left back, three in midfield, Phillips as a holding midfielder, Alise and Aronson outside him. And the three front players, a one e top scorer up front, not playing so well with 6.4. And Rafinha on the right and Harrison on the left. Substitutes that came on in the game. Dan James he's had a quite a good, good pre-season. Uh, so has Harrison. Uh, Dan James came on seven. Bamford, of course, was the man of the match for scoring that goal with a 7.8. We're going to show you Villa at home. For playing Friday the 25th on telly as usual uh, and this is the team 
that we've picked today. So Bamford's uh, replacing a one ear front. Basically, that's uh, the only change. We've just moved uh, Alise to the left instead of the right of Phillips. Yeah, one change to the lineup, and uh, on the subs bench we've got Livakovic, Richard Smolchich, Liam Cooper, James Shackleton, Dan James, Joe Gelhart, Alvarez Martinez, and Tayo Iwani. So let's see how we go. We're going into this positive with our custom Gagan Press system on a 4 3 3. Here we go then, after a 1 1 draw at Leicester, brought about by our injury time fortuitous goal by uh, Patrick Bamford. We're at home now to Aston Villa at a packed Ellen Road. Looks like the crowd is a bit more a bit more uh, normal uh, than usual in Football Manager. Nearly a full house. Here's Rafinha going away down the right. Puts in a cro long cross. Harrison after that one. Can he get it back in? That's a weird pass to Dallas. Back to the halfway line nearly. And uh, Phillips probing away. Bamford puts Harrison in, but it's last minute tackle off the post. <laughs> How weird was that? Nearly an own goaler by the look of it. What a weird highlight that was. And uh, it's uh, taken away then. Uh, just a uh, cross in there, corner, and that's Strauk just heading over. A lot of highlights here. And uh, just as a note, Pep Guardiola has left Manchester City in the close season after seven years there. I uh, don't think he's moved on. He's just uh, had his had his time and uh, resigned from Man City. So Man City under new charge this this year. I'm not quite sure who who got the job. Here's a new boy, Elise, our record signing back to Dallas. Out to Phillips. We're controlling the game here. Aronson, Rafinha. He's lost it though to Mings. Mings just whacks it up front. Strout picks up and we go again. There's a lot of highlights in this game for not much action. And here's Aronson. He's through. One on one and sticks it away. Sis from Elise. And uh, getting in on the act there is Aronson. What a great take that was. And uh, 1 0 build up. Very good build up here. Started from Dallas at the halfway line. But Elise, what a ball through there. And Aronson, no one tracking his run. Puts it past Martinez. And we're 1 0 up in the 15th minute. What a good start we've had. Uh, no shots on target for Villa. Just the one on target for us, and we're up into top position because we're the early game, early game on Friday night, and we're the only two. This is the only two teams that have played two games. Rafinha going away down the right, still with us on his new contract, hundred over a hundred thousand a week he's on now, and worth every penny. And uh, finished sixth last year. We're in the Euro Cup. We've not uh, preliminary rounds being played in that one. We don't quite know what group we're going to be in, but as soon as we know. I'll uh, transmit that to you on Twitter and the uh, idea is to run through with uh, Football Manager 23 coming up very shortly is to run through this season very quickly and uh, just prove two or three more and Bamford with a shot just wide there uh, it's all leads on this on the highlights so far we're getting a lot of highlights to say we're on, on key highlights uh, but it's Villa here, Dina coming down the left, but uh, that's headed clear by Aileen, only as far as Louise, and it's back to Dina again, he's going to get a cross in, that's blocked, McGinn, Podence, new signing for Villa, Podence from Wolves has equalised, and 27 minutes, we're all square, we didn't quite clear that ball, and uh, Villa back on level terms, we don't want to see that again, so let's skip that, and get on with the game. So, uh, I, as I say, the idea is only to produce uh, two or three more videos for this season and uh, wrap that up before Football Manager 23 comes along. Main save this coming uh, year is going to be Bradford Park Avenue. We're starting at a local club and uh, trying to take them to glory. It's not a, a rags to riches, or it is a rags to riches. It's not me moving on to different clubs to uh, get to the Premier League we're going to keep with Bradford Park Avenue uh, as long as I don't get the sack that is and uh, try and take them up to the Premier League the only club not the only club the only club in our area that's played in all four divisions of, of the leagues and they're now languishing in bottom place in real life in uh, uh, the National League North anyway back to today here's Harrison getting away down the left can we take the lead again it's Harrison showing a clean pair of heels but uh, Cash there says that's a foul. We've got a penalty. 
looks like a good tackle to me could be overruled by VAR this one just before half time and I think this could be overruled let's have a look no we're sticking with it VAR saw penalty as well and uh, chance to take the lead just before half time and it's Rafinha with the penalty sticks that away goes the right way Martinez but uh, isn't stopping that one and Rafinha gets on the score sheet for the first time this season and it's 2-1 leads at half time here we go sticks that the right way in the corner went the right way as I say Martinez but no chance in stopping that it's half time let's get into the dressing room and praise the boys and uh, hopefully can uh, see this one out in the second half so team talk is complete said to the players it's important to stay focused in the second half don't allow complacency to creep in that's gone down very well apart from with Elise he seems demotivated and Dallas seems demotivated but overall taking on board what I'm saying there and we go into the second half 2.3 xg to us only 0.55 uh, for Villa so we're on top and uh, let's hope it stays that way that's Podens he uh, scored the goal for Villa so we need to keep him out Cash picking up the ball on the halfway line Matty Cash Polish international knocks the ball forward to Buendia back to Cash he's going to get a cross in here we can see we didn't stop that one and uh, Ings Danny Ings there forward puts that one in and uh, more or less a free header not much of a challenge there I don't know who, who it was that was marking him let's see if we can see uh, that's Aileen that's uh, yeah it's Aileen he comes on to Aileen and centre backs in the middle and he dropped off to the far post and uh, beat Aileen in the air to equalize the game and we, we've let them back in it let's have a shout uh, and demand more and it's Podence, that man is uh, causing us problems and uh, we need, really need to get on top of this game so we've just demanded more, Bamford's uh, robbed him there Bamford plays it back to Aileen, Aileen to Phillips Phillips to Alise, can he put another killer ball through like he did in the first half but uh, now we're keeping possession, Strauch, Alise Alise's found Dallas out on the left, out to Harrison, Harrison Claws across. Oh, oh, what's happening there? It's cannoning off Villa players galore. And a uh, real scramble in the box there. But uh, eventually uh, Villa clear the ball. And we're 67 minutes. Let's have, see if we can make a change after this. Let's see this highlight first. Phillips. Bamford. Bamford knocks the ball along. It's Harrison getting away again. Getting away from Cash. Can he put a good ball in? He plays it back. But straight to Villa. And they're on the counter. Buendia, someone get in front of him, stop him running. Strauch, good tackles by Strauch there. Aronson to Elise. Elise. Rafinha, Rafinha puts the ball through. Harrison is clear again of cash. Can he slot this one in? But straight into the arms of Martinez. Should have scored there. Let's uh, make a change then. 72 minutes gone. And let's see who we can change. Watkins has come on for Ings for them. Uh, let's have a look 6.9 Bamford everybody's doing reasonably well uh, just melee 6.5 I don't know why that is apprehensive I'm not going to change the goal goalie at this point uh, that would be uh, a bit drastic Phillips 6.8 motivated no I'm not going to make a change I'm going to keep it as it is for now so we're getting into the latter end of the game we really should be going for a winner here let's uh, Demand more again. What's that one about, Paul Dense? Uh, Paul Dense has already scored one season. Tell Dallas to mark him. Go on then. Even though Dallas is playing his fullback, Harrison is away again. He's getting clear of uh, Cash, or have they made a change there? And he knocks it across, Rafinha. Oh, and uh, on the line, Martinez uh, falls down and takes that one in his grasp. And. Uh, we really should have won this game. Look at that, 3.12 against 1.25. See if we can put uh, two forwards on. Patrick Bamford's not done all that bad. Fired up, composed. Uh, Luke Aileen's got a 6.6. .6. Let's go for three at the back and uh, let's bring a one in for Aileen. We're gonna go for it. So one e and he's gonna be, uh, let's have him as a complete forward on attack. So we've got two up front. Point is no good. 
we're gonna go attacking we talk front let's drop Phillips back so he plays as a half back so he's joining the two central defenders and let's leave it at that then so we're going attacking three one two four and there's a big gap on the right there uh, and we'll go with that for the last uh, five ten minutes or so so we're going with three at the back two up front for the last five or ten minutes uh, it says Aston Villa have their backs against the wall this what's going to happen now that we've gone attacking they're going to score surely we're just going to get done here although Aronson and the, they're going into the hole where there's no ailing now Dinier, Trezeguet, Strauch heads out but they've still got the ball here Chambers oh he's sit the crossbar but then it's gone in Watkins has got the rebound in and what you say going for the win oh, we're having a goal review here come on cross it off yes goal disallowed didn't deserve it anyway so Watkins is offside let's have a look at it again yeah he was offside lurking in front for that tapping off the bar but it's not counting VAR to the rescue and can we go and get the winner now I'm going to still stay on attacking because points not good enough we've got to go Rafinha but uh, headed back by Konsa and uh, time's running out four minutes of added time and uh, as I say we really need to be two points dropped if we don't get the winning goal we got a late winning uh, equalizing goal in the first game at Leicester here's a one hit but poor ball Louise tidies up there and it's uh, Villa on the counter again that man Paul Dents has been a fawn in our side look at that on his own McGinn edge of the box puts it in free shot what where was the mark in there and uh, it's been a smash and grab here by Villa uh, I don't want to see that again because our marking was terrible probably been going down to three at the back should have stayed where we were but we've gone down a 3-2 didn't deserve it 3.4 xg against their 1.73 and uh, again we should have won Alise is our man of the match 8.1 so a good game for him Aronson you can't really blame anyone there there's only Melier at 6.6 .6, that's uh, down in the markings 6.7 for Ailey 6.7 for Phillips so really got to learn from that a very disappointing end to that game so one point from two games we started off uh, the defeat against Villa leaves us in 14th position could be worse than that obviously we've played two games uh, let's just move on and, and let the other games play here are the rest of the Saturday games Liverpool 3, Arsenal 2 Adi Amy they've got now the wonder kid they've got some real talent up front of Liverpool Brentford 2, Burnley 2 Southampton 3, Newcastle 1 Watford 1, Leicester 3 so Leicester add into their draw with us they've got 4 points and are in 4th place West Ham 4, Everton 1 Wolves 2, Bournemouth 1 Man United 2, Chelsea 1 Brighton won Reading nil. We're in 15th place after two games. I know it's early days, and uh, definitely based on the the performances, we could have had six points. Never mind one. But that's the way it goes. We'll come back later on in the season. I'm going to run through uh, the games. Only a couple of videos before FM23 comes out. So please send me any comments, like and subscribe, and we'll come back a little bit later. Dave Dog. For now, out. Thank you.